Hello everyone. Today we, Sir Gurudash Mahavidyalaya, are going to organize a webinar on the mathematical modeling of COVID-19. We have Professor Priti Kumar Roy, Professor Jadavpur University, as the speaker of the webinar. We have on the screen Dr. Monishankar Rai, the principal of our college, Dr. Shinjini Basu, IQAC coordinator, Dr. Shivankar Shah, faculty member of mathematics department. We have huge response from various premier institutions of India and a few from abroad also. Due to this huge number of participants, we have moved to this platform, YouTube live streaming. We could not arrange it in Google Meet. However, you can put your question or queries in the live chat box. So let us start our journey. First, Dr. Munishankar Roy, principal of our college, will deliver introductory speech, which will be followed by a welcome note from our IQC coordinator, Dr. Shinji Nibasu. After that, Dr. Shubhankar Shah will introduce our speaker, Professor Priti Kumar Roy, and we will move to the main session. So first, our principal, sir, Dr. Munishankar Roy. Good morning, everyone. I feel very happy that Department of Mathematics of my college in collaboration with IQC, has organized today's webinar. The title of the webinar is Recent Trends on COVID-19, Mathematical Modelings and Their Social Impact. The webinar looks very interesting and contemporary as well we all concerned about COVID-19. The resource person, Professor Priti Kumar Roy, Jadavpur University, is a mathematical expert in the field. We formulate that in the busy schedule he has given us time. I welcome him to this session. I am also thankful to the participant of the webinar for their overwhelming responses. That the webinar shall enhance and refresh intellectual inputs of the of the teaching fraternity. Last but not least, thanks to Dr. Subhrokanti Chakraborty, Head Department of Mathematics, Dr. Subhankar Shah, faculty member of the Department of Mathematics, also Shinjini Basu, coordinator IQC, has organized such a webinar. I hope we all enjoy a great session together. Thank you. Now, Dr. Shinjini Basu will give a welcome note. Thank you, Shubhru. Uh, hope I'm audible to everyone. Uh, good morning still, I guess. It's 11.58 AM, so good morning to all. And a very well warm welcome, everyone who has joined us at this uh, webinar, respected our respected principal, sir, uh, our venerable speaker, Mr. Priti Kumar Roy, dear colleagues and participants. Uh, the compulsion of physical disengagement of the last couple of months has increased mm -hmm. our digital interactions manifold. This webinar jointly organized by the Department of Mathematics and the Internal Quality Assurance Cell of Sir Gurudash Mohavidyalay Kolkata is part of a series of initiatives at such fruitful academic engagement. Now, uh, as a teacher and a student of literature, I am intellectually completely ill-equipped to comment on today's lecture. However, the present pandemic has changed the coordinates of our relationship with science. In a sense, it has exposed the limits of science as the panacea of all of our modern problems, modern woes. But in a strange way, it has also made us aware of the multidisciplinary possibilities of science in understanding the apparently incomprehensible behavior of this disease in an age that often tends to reduce science into mere technocracy, the pandemic reminds us one, once more what science shares with philosophy, a drive 
to understand and know the underlying patterns of our existence. Professor Roy, in his long and distinguished career, has extensively worked on mathematical models of complex and contagious diseases. As we are trying to map the movement of a deadly disease by detecting patterns in its seemingly random transpatial spread, predictions regarding its growth, fatality, and recovery rates, possible peaks, and hopeful flattening of curves have become part of our vocabulary denoting a new intersection of scientific models in our everyday lived experience. As an outsider to the discipline, I would hope that today's, work, uh, today's webinar would help us to understand that intersection a little better. I would once again welcome everyone and express my gratitude to Professor Roy for sharing his insight and experience with us. Thank you. Now I request Dr. Shubham Shah to introduce Professor Preeti Kumar Roy and let us move to the main session. Thank you, uh, Shubham. <clears throat> At first, I want to address Professor Preeti Kumar Roy by giving a short brief about him and his research work. Professor Roy is a professor of Jadavpur University in the Department of Mathematics. He is proficient in nonlinear system dynamics and expert in mathematical modeling. He researches mainly in infectious diseases like HIV, cutaneous leishmaniasis, autoimmune diseases like psoriasis. Recently, he has started work working on COVID-19 and submitted two major projects on it. Apart from epidemiology, he also researches on the industrial mathematics on production of biodiesel. Current chale gala, Sir, uh, Shubhankar is hmm. not audible, I think. Uh, anyway, yes, you yes. are audible ah. enough. And uh, okay. you are visible also. So okay. let us okay. move to our main session. Sir, please okay. start. Yes, OK. Okay, good noon, everybody. First, I would like to thank uh, the principal, Manishankar Rai, uh, Sir Gurudash College, and uh, organizer of this webinar. My, I am very much happy to give an opportunity to deliver my talk. Uh, in this sense, scenario, uh, COVID-19, we have started our work or journey uh, when uh, the this disease spread in our country. And we, the mathematician, how can we give some predictions or give some suggestions to the government or the society that we have started in the month of February last week, March first week. And all these works has been done uh, through my senior researcher, those who have worked PhD under my guidance, uh, a five researchers team, along with two abroad specialists on mathematical modeling. And just recently already, the um, organizer of the webinar, Shubro, has told all of you. So now I will start my lecture. And the topic is recent trends on COVID-19, mathematical modelings and their social impacts. 
So before going to this part, first I would like to say something about the coronavirus. The coronavirus are large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe disease such as Middle East respiratory syndrome and severe acute respiratory syndrome that is SARS-CoV. A novel coronavirus that is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans. The novel corona disease which we call as COVID-19 emerged in Yuhan, all you know about it, China in December 2019. In a matter of weeks, the disease had spread well outside China and now reaching countries in all parts of the globe. Its treatment and recovery and awareness at this moment are the most primary concerns for every country. In the past two decades, coronavirus have caused two large scale pandemics, SARS, that is severe acute respiratory symptom, and MERS, that is Middle East respiratory syndrome. Coronavirus caused mild respiratory illness. In 2003-2004, severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS-CoV, caused an epidemic of SARS affected 26 countries. And at the end of the epidemic in June, 2003, 8,439 people had been affected and 812 died from SARS. Novel coronavirus, that is Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus or MERS-CoV was first identified in Saudi Arabia in 2012. Approximately 35% of reported patients with MERS-CoV infection have died. Since September 2012, who has been noticed of 2,494 laboratory confirmed cases of infection with MERS-CoV? So at this juncture, standard rec recommendations to prevent infection spread include regular hand washing, covering mouth and nose when coughing and sneezing, thoroughly cooking meat and eggs. All this should be maintained. Have had close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. So this is the incident which has been happened and still we are following it. So before going to the main part of the research First, we should know about the biological concept about the disease. So, I'll start my journey from beginnings and ultimately we will reach the mathematical formulation of COVID-19. And lastly, we will give some suggestions or predictions or results to the audience. Now, first I will tell you what is disease. A disease is anything infectious, 
spreading from one organism to another or non-infectious does not spread from one organism to another that changes or disrupts normal cell function. Now if we look the origin of disease, first we will remember the Egyptian medicine. Despite their lack of scientific knowledge, some of the treatments they used were very effective and still it is used today. Egyptians are recognized as the first to treat disease systematically. One of the pioneer health worker, Hippocrates, believed in the healing power of nature and thought that disease developed from natural causes. Obvious. Hippocrates prescribed also the diets, rest, fresh air, masses and baths can be treated as a treatment. Also Hippocrates approaches to disease and research are the first step on the way to the prevention and control of the disease. Now, to discuss about this whole journey, we should know about the basic terminology and definitions that is infection, contamination, infestation, contagious disease, epidemic, endemic, pandemic, eradication, elimination, reproductive rate of infection, host, vector and reservoir. During this lockdown period and after unlock of 8 June, all we know the people, those who are very much aware about the disease of COVID-19 from the social media, from the air, from the Duradarshan, we are knowing all these terms. But actually, what is the basic definition of these terms? First, we will tell about the infection is the entry and development or multiplication of infectious agent in the body of man or animals. An infection does not always cause illness. There are several levels of infection. Gradients of infection can be, can be replaced as colonization, subclinical or inapparent infection that is called polio, latent infection, virus of heart simplex and manifest or clinical infection. This type of infection can be knowing about do any kind of work. Later we can go through the contamination. That means the presence of an infectious agent that is pathogen on a body surface, on or in clothes, beddings, toys, surgical instruments or dressing or other articles or substances including water and food. Why I am telling about the contamination? Recently, the, this is COVID-19. It is very much associated, associated to knowing about it because just you have to see that when pathogens can come from human or contaminated objects or animal bite or environment, our body immune system will be breaked down. In case of COVID-19, basically this infection will go through by human or contaminated objects. So, if we can see why contaminated objects for COVID-19, 
what we are getting from the different source that is the coronavirus how long it will sustain on the surface just you have to see the paper and tissues it will sustain 3 hours copper 4 hours cardboard 24 hours wood 2 days cloth 2 days stainless steel 2 to 3 days polyphylene plastic that is 3 days glass 4 days paper money 4 days and outside surgical mask that is outside of surgical mask it will stay up to 7 days so it is very much essential to know about the contamination of the surface which is mainly affected by the coronavirus then when a pathogen enters to the body it works by damaging individual cells within the organs in some cases it attacks an entire body system so infestation it is also the lodgement development and reproduction of athropods on the surface of the body or in the clothing as for example leech each might this term could also be used to describe the invasion of the gut by parasiticomes as for example ascariasis so contagious disease can be reflected as a disease which is the one that is transmitted through contact examples include scabies tacoma std and leprosy all these are basically the contagious disease now how can we define a host all as we are telling about the in this scenario in this period that is host host means a person or an animal that affords subsistence or lodgement to an infectious agent under natural conditions that is types of include an obligate host definitive that is primary host intermediate host and transport host vector of infection all we know about the vector of infection that is the which i which we call actually the vector bond disease jamon that means the um, like malaria uh, leishmaniasis all these are the vector bond disease so it is not much more important to discuss uh, here let a reservoir it is also uh, important that is any person animal arthropod plant soil or substance or a combination of these in which an infectious agent normally lives and multiplies on which it depends primarily or survival and where it reproduces itself in such a manner that it can be transmitted to a susceptible host it is the natural habitat of the infectious agent now after happening the situation in china all we know about the epidemic that means ap means upon demos means the people and the usual occurrence in a community of disease specific health related behavior or other health related events clearly in excess of expected occurrence which happened in u1 in uh, december 2019 epidemics can occur upon endemic states too so endemic that means in and demos means people so it refers to the constant presence of a disease or infectious agent within a given geographic area or population group so it is the usual or expected frequency of disease within a population now we are telling about the covid 9 it is a pandemic disease so can you give the definition pandemic and exotic that means an epidemic usually affecting a large portion proportion of the population occurring over a wide geographic area such as the section of a nation in china obviously you have seen 
that only one province, basically the Hubei province, and particularly more specific region that is Wuhan, in this place, basically this disease was spread. No other parts of the country in China, it was not spread out. So the entire nation was not affected. The entire nation, a continent or the world, as for example, influenza pandemics, this all, now the situation COVID-19, it is called as the pandemic disease. Another definition that is exotic, that means the exotic disease are those which are imported into a country in which they do not otherwise occur. Suppose at the initial level in my home state, that is West Bengal, the infection rate was very poor and the first COVID patient was identified in my place in Calcutta that he came from the other country. So the disease was transported from the other state. So obviously it can be treated as exotic. And more precisely, if we look uh, uh, through the uh, history, then the rabies in the UK, it is also the anxiety. Now, eradication and elimination. That means the termination of all transmission of infection by the extermination of the infectious agent through surveillance and containment. Eradic eradication is an absolute process and all or none phenomenon restricted to termination of infection from the whole world. Now, just you have to see after lockdown four in my country, just you have to see, we have chosen some containment zone. That is the infections is sustained in particular that place. Because during the lockdown period, the total country was locked and it is not possible to, to um, uh, to uh, contain, continue this period in a long time. So we have opened something else and we particularly, particularly we have identified some places where the infection is much more higher. So the place has been treated as a con containment zone. The term elimination is sometimes used to describe eradication of a disease from a large geographic region. Disease which are amenable to elimination in the meantime are like as polio, measles and diphtheria. Now another basic biological as well as mathematical term is very much important during this period, especially for the pandemic disease that is reproductive rate of infection. So how we can define it? That is reproductive rate of infection is the potential for an infection disease. Infectious disease to spread influential factors include the probability of transmission between an infected and a susceptible individuals, frequency of population contact, duration of infection, virulence of the organism, and population immune portion. So these rate that is reproductive rate can be defined in two cases that is if we treat as this reproduction rate reproductive rate is r0 then r0 if r0 is greater than 1 then obviously a man can infect three person that is r0 equal to 3 then again from one man to uh, infect the another two persons so here R0 equal to 2. Again, this man, this man can infect the another 2 percent. Again, one man can infect uh, another 3 percent. In my country, just you have to see during the COVID-19 situation, the initial, the infection, I will tell you later elaborately about the lockdown period and non-lockdown period, the, how, how the infections rate, infection rate has been increased. That I will discuss later. But uh, this cumulatively, this infection can be grown. So basic reproductive ratio, it is very much important to uh, say something about a system or a dynamical situation uh, that has been explored later in different sense that uh, it is very much important 
knowing about the R0. Now, if it is continued, now if R0 is less than 1, just you have to see the last uh, connection that is R0 is less than n, then obviously no infection will be occurred from one man to that is their transmission, disease transmission or pathogen transmission will not be happened if R0 is less than 1. Next, we all working. I am a mathematician. My working group also the basically the mathematician. But we are doing some epidemiological model in true sense in mathematical flavor. So obviously you should know about the terminology, the epidemiology and what is its definition. The study of this distribution, frequency and determinants of health problem and disease in human population to obtain, interpret and use health information to promote health and reduce disease. Now, what is infectious disease? COVID-19 is also an infectious disease. So a disease caused by organism that enter the body and multiply within the body within a short period or a longer period. Suppose in COVID-19, if the foreign body particles or the infectious agent introduced in your body within 14 days, it must be identified and suppose first four days or five days or seven days, the symptoms that has not been uh, forecasted, but within after four days or five days, it is to be focused. This is called the symptomatic. We are using these words, symptomatic. Another, the infectious agent has been introduced in your body. This this agent multiplied within a short period, but your, uh, our, if our immune system is very strong, obviously the pathogen will be removed from our body. And but the, but the pathogen has already been introduced in your body. This is called, but not been deflected. So this is called the asymptomatic. So obviously the infectious disease we clearly say about a disease caused by organism that entire body and multiply within the human body. Now types of infectious disease, the cold virus causes inflammation in the mucous membranes lining the nose and throat, mononucleosis known as the kissing disease. Common in teens, it's a virus that multiplies in the lymphocytes, changing lymphocyte appearance. And lastly, I'll tell about the coronavirus causes COVID-19. Co means the stands for corona and VI for virus and D for disease. Now, when just I have told you earlier, the, our immune system. So suppose, uh, Suppose if we consider the occurrence, latest occurrence in our geographical region at top north, that when we identified that Chinese soldiers attacking or captured our places, or they are trying to capture our places, all of our army and soldiers going, particularly in that specific geographic region. For why? Why? Because their foremost uh, target to protect our countrymen, our country. So, when if we analysis in this way in an immune system, suppose in it, that means the body's first line of defense against the disease. So, when a disease comes and if it is introduced in your body, our body's first line of defense against this disease, that is skin, outer protective barrier, and next macrophages, natural killer and cells. In the same way, if you see in case of army, of our army, our air force, our defense, all these three groups mutually accumulated or depended with each other. First protection group, second protection group, third protection group. So microphages, natural killer cells, and neutrophil skills, infections, 
their target is to kill the agent so they they in in our body system their target also that kills the unknown foreign agent or foreign elements what can we say and another part that is in the last stage that second line of defense that is white blood cells and lymphocytes and rather the antibodies from when there is a pathogen just i have told you earlier that if our immune system we that that is very strong if our country is very strong so obviously the enemy they do not have any capability to target us so in the same way if our antibody is formed when there is a pathogen that is the enemy is entered in our body then obviously to some extent automatically the pathogen will be go down our next part our immune system under attack this is i am not going to the elaborate discussion of this part and now the mathematical model now mathematical model development steps first you should identify the problem next identify the existing knowledge before february we did not have any idea about the disease about the coronavirus or covid 19 but we know about the mars or sars everything since it was happened in 2003 to 2004 again from to the but we do we did not have much more idea about the virus or the disease so we have developed our knowledge and identified our existing knowledge next part follow formulation of the mathematical model you knowing this knowledge you will try to formulate a mathematical model and when we we do our research we know about the different tools how can we solve a problem a mathematical problem we know about it your next target is the solution how can we solve the problem so we can find out from our best level that is the solution of the mathematical model and from that solution whether it is possible to give some interpretation so obviously the part is interpretation of the solution and later we will try to comparison with the real world so what we are getting from our result or from our solution or the uh, or we we are uh, dis, uh, describing the interpretation whether it is possible to com comprise with the real world if it is possible then obviously we will be able to write a report and that report basically the our research work our research prediction or research result so <coughs> so <coughs> in this way basically we uh, try to formulate our mathematical model and next is that the functions of mathematical models and understanding so obviously explicit assumptions that is testable predictions framework for data analysis projections interventions outcome impact reverse outcomes combining interventions target settings impact of new technologies and advocacy so all these constraints if we can consider then obviously we will be able to formulate a mathematical model now why do we need mathematical models in infectious disease epidemiology why because a population based model integrates knowledge and data about the infectious disease every time last one or two months before obviously you have seen that every day our health ministry government of india giving given data by durudarshan or still now we are getting data from the ministry of health every day they are giving they are uh, improvising their data they are updating their data every time so we will be able to do something with the mathematician to able do something and the natural history of the disease obviously we have some idea about the infectious disease hiv we have the idea 
about the leishmaniasis, we have the idea about the leprosy. Again, the transmission of the pathogen between individuals, the epidemiology, we know about it, better understand the disease and its population level dynamics, and lastly, evaluate the population level impact of interventions, that is vaccination, antibiotic or antiviral treatment, quarantine, bed net, mask, all these. All these should be incorporated when we are wishing to formulate a mathematical model. In this lecture today, I will show you the how a mathematician can predict uh, or the group of mathematicians can predict say, something about the disease and how we can control using the drug that we have shown. Now, direct and indirect effect of vaccination. All we are telling when it will be uh, formulated, when uh, the vaccination will be created uh, for this COVID-19. So vaccination basically induces both direct and indirect herd protection effects. Direct effects, that means the vaccinated individuals are no more or much less susceptible to the infected or have the disease. And indirect effects, that is herd protection, when a fraction of the population is vaccinated, there are less infectious people in the population. And hence, both vaccinated and non-vaccinated have a lower risk to be infected. That is the lower sports of infection. Now, just you have to see the effect of vaccination through this geometric diagram. That is, this is called the uh, susceptible and when the pathogen enter into the body initially it will be the latent period latently infections uh, will be occurred then actively infectious that is i and lastly the recovered people in 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 covid 19 scenario the same thing is happening that is susceptible host that means those who are non infectious when the pathogen will enter it will be sustained few days after the uh, the uh, symptom will be occurred during this before going to the symptoms the this period is called the latent period and the, when symptoms will be occurred if you test it then obviously covid 19 will be considered and the person will be treated as the active affected person that is pathogen has already been introduced and they have multiplied in his body and to some people and so many people since they are recovering using drug or their immune system much more higher this is R. So if we introduce the vaccine in the sustainable host ultimately the people will go through the recovery. So, no, there are no possibility to enter the pathogen that is the SARS-CoV-2. This is the most important factor. And another part is that this is called the direct infect that is susceptible to latently infected. This is this infection is direct effect and indirect effect that means again when the susceptible population is to be actively infected these actively infected cell population will uh, will occur much more infectious agent that is virus and that will be ultimately will infect the other people when the other people will come very close with each other now about the coronavirus if we see the world scenario at this moment up to 28 june i have received the data that is world population at this moment been affected by coronavirus more than 1 crore and deaths more than 5 lakhs in our country already we have reached through infection that means 
फाइव लैक्स ट्वेंटी एट थाउजेंड मोर देन दैट ऑलरेडी बीन इन्फेक्टेड इन आवर कंट्री एंड ऑलरेडी लास्ट न्यूज आई हैव हर्ड यस्टरडे दैट इज नियर अबाउट एटीन थाउजेंड पीपल ऑलरेडी बीन दैट इन आवर कंट्री रिकवरी पोर्शन ऑलरेडी यू आर आई हैव शोन यू एंड जस्ट आई विल शो यू दैट इज 19000 at this moment the infection more than 19000 infection per day covid 19 in our country now current scenario probably you will see the most affected zone is the himachal pradesh in our country maharashtra and tamil nadu here per million residents more than 1000 is infected and other parts of the country has been shown here and that is the active cases the people active cases that is not been identified but uh, only important thing is that testing so if we will be able to more more and more testing so it will be uh, it will be that how many peoples still at this moment or within a short period been infected in our country so let us confirm cases in our country up to 28 june that is more than 1 lakh this 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 maharashtra also in uh tamil nadu it is that tamil nadu has not yet reached up to 1 lakh but maharashtra uh, it is it is at this moment it is very we are very much worried about the uh, infection in maharashtra in our our home place that is west bengal three districts basically the calcutta north chobbish pargora and the howra districts very much infected uh through this disease now covid 19 infection process that is that is the virus enters the body primarily through the nose also it may get uh, in through eyes and uh, mouth eyes and uh, mouth it can be entered in our body now we have recently we have done a work on effect of lockdown to fight against covid 19 uh, along with my uh, senior researchers they are now um, doing their job in different colleges uh, so here uh, we have uh, considered four populations we have considered four populations that is uh, we have considered four populations and uh, these four populations uh, are the uh, sh ah qh and imh the susceptible human our human people that is migrant and suspected and last population is called the immune human at a specific time t we now assume the following assumptions to to um, set of ordinary differential equation to represent the disease that is uh, that is that is that is here beta is the rate of infection that is rate of spreading of virus between susceptible class and people in quarantine period that the rate of these all people with the susceptible class are being infected that that is the rate of infection that is beta gamma is the gamma is the gamma this gamma is the natural death rate of the susceptible human actually people 
people that is migrant and suspected in quarantine period should not come across with other susceptible humans they are either home quarantine or transferred to isolation in hospital or nursing homes but but some of them have come across with the susceptible accidentally and so the disease have spread drastically in our country just you have to check it obvious it is obvious now now further uh, from here we have tried to say something uh, that uh, if the lockdown period is to be continued what will be the scenario when you have started this work during that time uh, the lockdown just started but now it is uh, completely open some containment zone or regions still they are uh, continuing the lockdown so i'll show you the show you our result later we have uh, we have a uh, uh, little bit expand our expanded our mathematical uh, model uh, basically our main object to save the mankind from enormous spreading of virus which is constant awareness campaign this is our main target through this program we can be able to form a different safe zone who do not directly or indirectly come across the covid 19 the rate of awareness campaign uh, is taken as tau rate of awareness campaign is uh, uh, taken as tau here and the normal death rate of the hour class hour class people that is jai and our target is to increase the immunity power of the people in quarantine period will continue and so the people will be immune at a rate at a rate phi finally gamma uh, omega sorry omega is the natural death rate of immune class so natural death rate of immune class is uh, uh, is uh, omega and later we have expanded this model uh, this model that is that is that is here you have considered the susceptible class award population quarantine people immune class and another part which we have considered that is infected population and to do the mathematical uh, awareness program uh, we have introduced the uh, drug in this mathematical model so here just i am telling that 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 uh, here no one just you have to oh, i have to mention you that no one will get infected through proper testing when the report have come corona positive the people in quarantine class is transferred to infected class with the rate of with the rate of delta this with the rate of delta and due to the application of drug or combination of drugs on the infected class our aim is to transfer the people from infected class to again susceptible class with the rate of psi so from these infected class it has been gone to the susceptible class the death rate due to infection we have assumed here as lambda now now uh, the in a real scenario we will be able or we have able to formulate uh, this mathematical model this mathematical model
we have done a lot of mathematics to solve this uh, 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 solve this model but i am not showing here due to the um, due to the uh, all uh, our audience are not purely on mathematics so just i will show you some slide on graphical representations that is this data we have considered and all this data has been considered from the ministry of health government of uh, government of india and the numerical solution just you have to uh, you have to show this the figure on this is the susceptible quarantine and immune population that is without awareness campaign what is to be happened first we consider the graphical uh, this graphical representation of population dynamics of our uh, proposed mathematical model in absence of uh, in absence of uh, awareness our class or our people actually we desire to observe the phenomenon if we do not apply awareness campaigning into our community we notice the sustainable population drastically increases just you have to see here the sustainable population drastically increases at first and then again it is decreases also finally it becomes stable just you have to check it it is stable in nature next the population in quarantine period increases very fast just you have to check it it is very fast and slightly again it is slightly decreases and ultimately it also becomes stable just you have to check it it is very stable in the long run our main aim is to enhance the immunity it is our main target how can we uh, be able to grow the immunity of the uh, people so and uh, and 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 uh, the people those who are in, uh, who are in uh, quarantine by means of various uh, procedure uh, we have seen that that the immune population exponentially at uh, beginning of to more less first 20 days just you have to check it first 20 days more or less first 20 days and next this population becomes stable our second figure just you have to check here we observe the susceptible class and the population in quarantine period we have same as our first figure but but the susceptible population becomes stable at slight higher magnitude just you have to check slight higher magnitude more interestingly we notice that population in quarantine class becomes stable at lower magnitude rather than the previous case that is without awareness campaigning it is very much interesting that both our and immune population firstly exponentially increase and ultimately become these two figures ultimately become stable and our third figure just you have to check the increasing tendency is such sharp like exponential curve with the number of infected cases will reach at the level of 45,000, just 45,000 approximately within the first 20 days, provided there are no lockdown. First, you should keep it in your mind. If there are no lockdown, 23rd March, we have started our lockdown. We had started our lockdown. If it was not locked down, then within 20 days, the population, infected population, uh, would be reached 
up to 45,000. But if the awareness campaign, including lockdown, is maintained properly in our country during that period, the number of infected cases would reach 20,000 approximately within 100 days. Just you have to check within 100 days, it will reach up to 100 days. Our next figure mentioning here that the drug. First, I would like to tell you that the drugs all are not acting in the patient. Therefore, some of the drugs are uh, uh, acting to the actively infected persons. So, we discussed the treatment policy or capability of working of drug or combination of drugs. Though no medicine or even vaccine is not yet been discovered, it is true. But scientists are trying their best to discover the appropriate drug or vaccine to fight against COVID-19. Now, we can suggest what would occur if drug is applied to the infected cases. Here we notice that many have already recovered and returned to their home. How is it possible? Some drugs like hydroxychloroquine, formotidine, etc., or combination of drugs are working successfully upon infected human. Remdesivir, all we know about this drug, the, we are the person, educated person, we know because we are very much interested about the drug, knowing about the drug. So Remdesivir is a nucleoside analog prodrug which has inhibitory belongings on pathogenic animal and human coronavirus. It also includes harsh acute resp respiratory symptoms, coronavirus, that is SARS-CoV-2. We have observed here that susceptible and quarantine time population increases sharply, increases sharply. And just you have to check sharply, and then it is decreases. And also, infected population, this population, just you have to check, gradually increases within just you have to check 10 days as drugs do not have significant action capacity. So if we go to the next slide, and obviously it is very much related, and it is obvious that, so how the people uh, will be recovered from this disease? Still they are recovering, so just you have to check this figure. If prescribed drugs work properly, suppose we are uh, giving this drug, damrizivir, hydroxychloroquine, all these drugs we are giving, and it is acting to the patients uh, properly, then the susceptible, susceptible population increases very fast. And quarantine time population and infected population come go down. Just you have to check. Quarantine population and infected population, just it is going down. So if, conclusion is that, the, if the drug acts to the infected people, then obviously the viral load will be declined. That means 
the population those who are infected and those even in a quarantine uh, period we don't know about in quarantine period who is infected and who is not but the the infection rate will be decreases so this is our output from this mathematical analysis furthermore just you have to check this figure we have started our lockdown in 23rd march so if we did not follow the lockdown then infection just infection within 80 days it would be happen 322000 within 80 days we have reached 322 days uh, 322000 before that is uh, after 80 days not before the infection was much lower before 80 days due to the cause of infection but when we have uh, unlocked just you have to see at this uh, it, it, it this in, in this in this figure just in this figure we have considered the uh, rate of infection uh, about uh, 5000 so about 5000 if it is to be continued then the infection rate uh, uh, is to be continued up to this way but in this figure just you have to check 80 days 80 days 644000 the infection rate is 20000 now and if it is not possible to continue the lockdown within 100 days we will reach 6 lakhs near about 7 lakhs and even because infection rate will be increased now it is 20, more than 20000 but it will be increased if it is constant to be considered as 20000 then within 180 days we will reach 7 lakhs but since the unlock period is going on so infection will reach much more higher rate and just have to check this figure here also just 25000 suppose the rate of infection so when we will reach within 100 days we will reach 8 lakhs more than 8 lakhs here about 9 lakhs so already we are going to the hmm, infection rate per day that is 25000 so therefore in in my earlier uh, in a in a um, communication i have told that we need more time even who has told that complete lockdown even it is required at this moment globally so many countries the epicenter since at this moment the brazil and uh, india and the, the russia so lockdown is much more important to control the disease since, since we are not containing it so obviously the and testing is increased but not much more therefore if you are able to test much more people within a short period during the period of lockdown the infection obviously it will be decreased in that case Uh, uh, we are hope we don't know actually since it is unlocked how long it is uh, where we will reach where the infection will go and probably we will uh, we'll see, see a drastic situation in near future just here just 25000 just 25000 you have to see uh, that within 100 days 8 lakhs 50000 earlier figure i have told you that within uh, within within uh, 100 uh, days and if the infection rate is 25000 we will reach to the infected people in our country near about uh, 9 lakhs so one thing is that the infection is chronologically increasing i am telling you repeatedly that if you maintain the degree 
different degrees, different parameters in the country. That is the lockdown, that is the testing, that is the social uh, parameters, what, you, what the who suggested, what the ICMR suggested, all these parameters. If you consider and if we are able to increase our immunity, obviously the infection will be declined and to some extent just you have to follow it is to be stable. So this was our first work and our second work just I would our second work that is predicting that was in in a macro level that work we did in a macro level but in if we consider in micro level that is in cellular level this work has been done uh, along with my uh, senior researcher Amarnath Chatterjee uh, uh, Shubhankar uh, he is also the joint convener of this uh, webinar uh, Fahad Al Boshi uh, he is working in Ashanshal College, my research collaborator Evin Khailov, Moscow State University and Elena, Texas University. So all we together did this work predicting the drug dynamics on COVID-19 infection, a nonlinear mathematical study. And we have given this work in our archive and it is now reviewing under the process. So how we have formulated the mathematical model before going to that part you must have to know i have discussed earlier to formulate the mathematical knowledge mathematical model you increase your knowledge so first you should have to know about the biological phenomena of this disease just here you have to see this is called spike this is called a spike spike is the main structural protein of the coronavirus and assembles into a special corolla structure on the surface of the virus as a trimer. This protein interacts with the host. Host means this is host. Interact with the host by bonding to host cell. This host cell, this is called the host cell. By bonding to the host cell re receptors to mediate virus invasion and determine viral tissue or host tropism. SARS-CoV-2 spike. This is SARS-CoV-2. This is spike. This SARS-CoV-2 spike, which we have mentioned, that is S. S interact with host angiotensin converting enzyme 2. Angiotensin converting enzyme 2 this host it is it is, it is uh, consisting this ace2 receptor after that s on b this s on this s on b this s on this portion this portion just uh, in a elaborate sense this s on b receptor bonding motifs that is R, RBMs in green, this green part and uh, bind with this SCE2 receptor, SCE2 uh, receptor that means the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor 2. After that this S1A this S on a domain may confer additional host interaction with AC2. Again, it will interact. After combining this, again, it will interact with S1, with S1 A domain. And additionally, host interactions with this ACE2 reception. Now, a furin port is cleavage substrate that may confer highlighted sensitivity to host protease cleavage and subsequently surface protease cleave S2 this portion protease cleave 2 
the fusion mediating subunit of S which triggers a series of conformational changes that result in the fusion mediating subunit of S which triggers a series of conformational changes that results in the fusion between the viral envelope and the target cell membrane. During these conformational changes, the ST subunit mediates virus cell and cell cell membrane fusion is to be basically occurred. At the same time, spike structural, this is spike structural um, <coughs> Structural integrity and cleavage activation play a key role in virus invasion and virulence. Therapeutic strategies to block coronavirus from entering host cell by targeting spike proteins or specific receptors on the host surface are valuable for the development of antiviral drugs. So our target is when this portion is attached to these ACE2 receptors, if we can give, this is host cells receptors. So if you can bind between these two, if we can prepare a drug in that way, so the after using this drug, so the, uh, the uh, rupturation of these all uh, cells from which the virus will be occurred will not be happening. So our target is to create a fusion inhibitor, which, which we have given here. And ultimately, if it is possible purely in all other necessary restrictions, considering all other uh, necessary uh, restrictions so obviously we will be able to control the disease so on that ground on that ground we follow the uh, That ground, we follow a step by step infection process described, which, uh, which I described earlier. For this, we consider, suppose here, uh, V as the concentration of SARS CoV 2 and AE, this AE or AE as the concentration of ACE2, this is ACE2 receptor on the epithelial cell surface produced at a rate it is produced at a rate p e suffix c produced at a rate p e suffix c where small e suffix c is the source of susceptible epithelial cell that is host cell and p this P is the number of ACE2 receptors. When the virus enters into the body, the viral subunits of S protein, S1A and S1B, denoted by S1A and S1B respectively, get activated and attached to AE. attached to a cells to form the dimeric complex C1 and S on B and ACE2 receptor. And again C2 of S on A and S ACE2 receptor at the rate beta 1 and beta 2. This is 
respectively. Here B, this B represents the successful exposure of S1B since it is, it is exposed only after attachment between S1B and SCE2 receptor. So it is to be completed. The dynamics of primary infection stage of SARS-CoV-2 uh, in this way we can uh, formulate and again again Again, here, here this A represents the multiplication, uh, multiplication capacity of S on B in response to virus. The parameter mu S, this mu S, parameter mu S, this mu s denotes the decay of s on b and s on a subunits of s and d on d2 d on and d2 these are the dissociation rates of c on and c2 respectively this additional attachment between between S on A and S on B and SCE2 results the successful exposure of viral fusion protein S2 at a rate C, which allows the surface protein on epithelial cell membrane. Epithelial cell membrane. and m e capital m e this capital m e m e to bind with it at the bonding force beta 3 to produce the interaction between s on and s2 um, with a e this ternary complex uh, C3. So the model can be written in this form along with the first part. Obviously here Q denotes the number of this Q denotes the number of surface portis on one epithelial cell and mu s and mu e mu suffix e denote the uh, uh, denote the decay of S2 subunits and healthy epithelial cells. The dissociation of C3 complex is uh, D3. And also here uh, Q denotes the number of surface portis and uh, and uh, uh, surface portis on and ep on epithelial cell and mu s and mu e denote the decay of s2 subunits and healthy epithelial cells the dis dissociation rate of c3 complex is uh, d3 now the last part along with the other two is di dt equal to that and dv dt equal to that that means the formation of c3 in the second part of the model formulation the formation of c3 complex ultimately turns out of out the infection of epithelial cells i this i i and production of new viruses at the rates v and n d suffix i respectively 
small n represents the number of virus particles that are produced that are produced uh, by that are produced by one infected epithelial cell and d on is the death rate of infected epithelial cells the clearance rate of sars cov 2 is mu v here so the model is this you should keep it in your mind that we have ignored the loss of virons due to infection of infected cells and this has the effect of overestimating the viron count and plays no important role in the estimate below that is mm -hmm. now if we just um a lot of mathematics already we have done to uh, complete this work i am not going to the mathematical portion purely mathematical portion of this work already i have taken on our 20 minutes so obviously i will tell about the numerical representation of this mathematical model just i will tell you this about this figure two initial uh, values of virus population v0 equal to uh, v0 equal to 10 and 12 and we can notice that for a small changes just for a small changes 10 and 12 for a small changes in the concentration of virus the trajectory starts to diverge significantly after uh, six day that means if there arise a minute change in the virus population the there could arise a huge risk of becoming infected so early and here another figure is uh, combining these two figures actually these two figures are showing the region of stability and unstability of the system with the changes in dose and dosing interval the upper region that is white region is safe meaning that for a patient if we choose our drug dose and dosing interval from this region from this region the disease free equilibrium stays stable in other words we have to choose a significant dose with a suitably small dosing interval to gain recovery from the disease but the lower region this is the lower region shaded region is unsafe meaning that we should not give a very small dose for a significantly large dosing interval this is risky and non, not also the time worthy furthermore i should mention here that in this model the another part we have given two drugs combined one is hydroxychloroquine and another part is hk1bc4 these two drugs because initially at the covid 19 still in my country hydroxychloroquine is using for the covid 19 patients even uh, a combination of drug therapy that is um, heart highly active antiretroviral therapy which are used in uh, basically hiv patient even that drugs which are using in our patients widely in our country 
for COVID-19 patients. So some people are taking uh, are absorbing and they are curing, recovering. So all these drugs uh, are using at this moment. Uh, here we have given two drugs that is hydroxychloroquine, combinedly two drugs and uh, it's going to be C4. These two drugs acts seriously, but we have seen that the infections uh, has not gone. Uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, infection has not been eliminated purely. Purely, infection has not been uh, eliminated. And this is the this is my work. Lastly, I'll uh, tell about the conclusion part. Uh, the from these two are sort we can conclude. Mm. The lockdown must be strictly adhered to by all countries. Otherwise, the infection will spread from one country to another. But lockdown is only a temporary solution, not a long-term solution, because this is having a huge negative impact in our socio-economy, which we have already begun to get at this point, we need to find proper drugs or antidotes. Though scientists are trying their best. And from the, from the last work, we will tell that, or we, we can recommend it, that the initial stage of detection of COVID-19 patients will be recovered within 10 to 12 days soon after using the combination of drugs which I have told you earlier that two drugs we have used on hydroxychloroquine and H1BC4. These two drugs we have used and 10 to 12 days soon after using this combination of drugs. But if the treatment starts after 10 days of infection or detection, it may take 30 to 35 days to recover. Such delay of treatment causes high mortality to the patient due to lower immunity and massive proliferation of viral load, which ultimately acts the lungs. So early detection and instant treatment are highly recommendable for control, controlling the COVID-19 patients. Now, I'll thanks again to the principal, Dr. Manishankar Rai, principal, Sir Gurudash Mahavidyalaya, Shinji Bosch, coordinator of IQSC SGM, Shubhra Kanti Chakravarti, head of the department and convener of the webinar, and Dr. Shubhankar Shah, joint convener of the webinar. All these are my team, Professor Evengin Khailab of Moscow State University, Professor Elena Girigova, Texas University, Avarnath Chatterjee, Dr. Shubhankar Shah, Dr. Fahad Alboshi, Dr. Divendu Vishash, uh, Dr. Ovirup Dotto, all of my senior researchers, now they are doing different uh, uh, colleges. They hard seriously to complete this work. Again, I acknowledge all of these, my researchers and the organizers. And this is the reference. And lastly, thank you. Hello. So, uh, thank you, Professor Priti Kumar Roy, uh, for this wonderful session. Uh, during this uh, session, we got some uh, questions from the audience. And uh, um, uh, Mr. Sona Day, who, uh, who is asking that, how do you derive those models? I think uh, if you followed the whole session, you can uh, see the, how you can see how the mathematical models are formulated. 
it has been the uh, it has been already uh, described. And uh, uh, Rajdeep Kaur is asking that, sir, if a person is infected by COVID-19 and suppose he or she is cured, can there can in their remaining life they suffer from other problems or disease? If their mortality rate increases. So, uh, can you tell me again the question? Can you tell me again the question? Rajdeep Gaur is asking, sir, if a person infected by COVID-19 and suppose he or she is cured, can is, the, is their remaining life they suffer from other problems or diseases? No, so far as my knowledge, I can tell you about the uh, disease that when COVID-19 patients is to be recovered, then the already antibody will be occurred in his body or it, is, it will be sustained. So some cases it has been observed that the COVID-19 patient again, they have been infected again COVID-19. But no immune impairment have, immune impairment effect has been occurred during, the, uh, during his uh, further lifespan. So I think uh, no, so no, it is uh, it is uh, quite particularly uh, on this issue. Uh, the again the patient uh, will be uh, will be infected in other diseases. No, I think there are no such uh, type of information I have not yet gathered. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one more question is uh, how do you uh, derive those models? Sorry, uh, the question is uh, how to motivate myself. Polash uh, Naya is asking that how to motivate myself and my students to implement of the mathematical model in this pandemic situation. Again, in this pandemic situation. So, so it is uh, it is it is a, your, uh, so he is a assistant professor. The, the question the question who raised is an assistant professor i know sir uh, uh, just uh, the name was shown in the screen that polash naya mr polash naya oh that uh, that uh, it is uh, it is uh, uh, it, uh, first not only covid 19 with the mathematician those who are working in the applied mathematics basically my specialization or my team specialization their specializations is mathematical violence. So when we will see a, a situation, first I, I have told in my lecture that in depth you should have to analyze the situation. First you have to try, you should have to try to understand the dynamics of the situation. And then you will try to formulate the mathematical model. So if you will be able to, uh, uh, to see the dynamics, see the object, uh, obviously you will be able to deliver that uh, things to your students. So you and obviously, I think uh, before going to formulate, uh, before going to mathematics or before formulate to ma uh, the mathematical model, first I'll tell you that you you should have to think the dynamics very seriously. You have you um, learn more, and uh, again uh, in, in depth you analyze analyze that situation dynamically. Then try to formulate mathematical model, and when Easily, you will deliver this if, uh, in front of your students. I think they will be interested. Okay, and the last question is: Are these differential equations practically tested for COVID-19? Are this? Are these differential equations practically tested for COVID-19? I can tell you that the first model and the second model. In first model, all we have. Uh, taken the data from the Ministry of Health, Government of India. And uh, what I will tell you that uh, in 160 days that the infection rate was uh, near about 9,000. And I, I have told that the, in September, uh, uh, August uh, earlier, uh, I, or we have found out that uh, in August 10, within August 10, the, the infection will reach near about 9 lakhs or 10 lakhs. 
something. So this actually mathematics is nothing but the prediction. That data which we have received from the different source in, in the, in the uh, real source that we have uh, implemented in our mathematical model. And what we are telling significantly we have seen that it is, it is reliable because what we are telling that is happening at this situation. So obviously I think it has a validity. Okay, thank you, sir, once again for this wonderful session. Uh, I want to uh, introduce himself uh, him, uh, once again that uh, he is a professor of Jagadpur University of Mathematics Department. Uh, he is proficient in nonlinear system dynamics and expert in uh, mathematical modeling. He has published hundreds of peer reviewed journals, uh, publications in different uh, journals. And, uh, he is the first person to survive to survive a series of mathematical models of CSS. And he is an eminent member in the different national societies, uh, like the Mathematical uh, Society of India, BMSI, International Association of uh, Engineers, European Society of Clinical Biology and Physicists, and European Society for Mathematical and Clinical Biology. Uh, he was Shivankar, uh, you know, your audios are getting distorted, so we could not listen to it properly. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the way Sir teaches, the way the Sir presents the PPT in a lucid way uh, from a, a non mathematical background, people or uh, non-mathematical biological background people also can understand it. I think uh, the presentation itself introduces sir. He needs no introduction. Uh, uh, but still, it would be better uh, if your audio was not distorted. Anyway, uh, I must thank you, sir, because I was so engrossed in your session. And uh, you have enlightened us in every possible way we could enrich us. And uh, being uh, or a student of mathematics, uh, we, we can uh, we can also have some uh, flavor of mathematical biology in future. I must thank the authority of our college for giving us the opportunity to arrange such webinar. I thank the IQAC coordinator for extending the help. The moderator of the session, Dr. Shubhanka Shah, has done a wonderful job. I must thank him also. I must thank uh, Ramkrishna Mondol, uh, who is the uh, who is the director of this channel who has given us the uh, technical support. And last but not the least, I must thank you all for your support. I mean, all our audiences. Please be with us. Ours is a small department with a dream of growing big. Thank you all. Thanks for today. Hope to meet you soon. Thank you.